Hello YouTube. Bane666 here. I came across this on Tumblr and thought I would have some fun pulling it apart. Society and the Creation of Misogyny and Misandry, by Pomegranate Bell. Well she actually included the word misandry, so it will be interesting to see what she has to say about it. Let's get stuck into it. Society, were you wearing revealing clothing when you were raped? In other words, men. It is okay to rape a woman if she is wearing revealing clothing. In other words, it is okay to ridicule a woman for wearing revealing clothing. In other words, the bodies of women are innately sexual and need to be covered up. In other words, women wearing revealing clothing could not possibly be dressing for the weather, they are merely asking for sex. In other words, women, you are not allowed to wear whatever you want. Wow, where to start with this? Does she truly believe that society thinks it's okay for a man to rape a woman? What am I talking about? Of course she does, she's a feminist devoid of reality. And once again we see a clear gendering of victim and victimizer. Is it okay for a woman to rape another woman if she is wearing revealing clothing? And hold on a second, is she saying that society is ridiculing, or sexualizing, women based on their clothing? because it does not make sense that it's doing both. And are not women sexualizing their own bodies by wearing revealing clothing? If you go out on a Friday or Saturday night in my city, and it's the dead of winter, you will undoubtedly see young women with skirts so short that they leave nothing to the imagination, shivering in the freezing cold. They are not dressed for the weather. They are dressed solely to get male attention. And if they wish to do that, I do not have a problem with it. It's their bodies, their choice. And if they want to freeze their arses off, while showing those same arses to the world, they are welcome to do so. No one is stopping them. Now obviously no one deserves to be raped based on what they wear, in fact no one deserves to be raped, full stop. And there may be some people, with extremist conservative views who think this way, but they are not the majority. I remember back in 2006, Sheikh Halali, a high-ranking Muslim cleric from Sydney, blamed rape on the way the victims were dressed. Muslim leader blames women for sex attacks. In the religious address on adultery, to about 500 worshippers in Sydney last month, Sheikh Halali said, if you take out uncovered meat and place it outside on the street, or in the garden or in the park, or in the backyard without a cover, and the cats come and eat it. Whose fault is it, the cats or the uncovered meat? The uncovered meat is the problem. The sheik then said, if she was in her room, in her home, in her hijab, no problem would have occurred. He was universally condemned right across Australia. But let's compare this to another story in the media around the same time. Anger sinks bikini boos up. A nightclub bikini boos up has been sunk after a wave of public outrage. The club will hold a Hawaiian night instead. Amber Lounge Management today scrapped plans for their Christmas bikini party where women wearing bathers would receive unlimited free drinks at the CBD bar on Friday night. The Christmas bikini party at the Melbourne CBD bar was this morning slammed by rape crisis counselors and alcohol experts, who said the party reduced women to sexual objects and exposed them to the risk of extreme intoxication and sexual assault. Victoria Police Chief Commissioner Christine Nixon said the planned event was irresponsible. We think it demeans women and its irresponsible serving practices, Ms Nixon said. Australian Drug Foundation spokesman Jeff Munro said some women would have been taken advantage of at the party. To drink excessively while wearing the equivalent of underwear exposes women to many risks, including almost certain sexual assault, Mr Munro said today. It is exploiting women by offering them as bait as it is inevitable many will become very drunk and vulnerable. Center Against Sexual Assault Manager Helen McReadragos labeled the planned event degrading. We're concerned about the whole event. 1. It doesn't encourage responsible alcohol consumption, Ms. McReadragos said today. 2. It objectifies women, that is the message it sends. Women are still seen as sexual objects being used to promote a venue. The Herald Sun website has been inundated with comments from readers disgusted by the event today. Ella of Melbourne said girls attending the nightclub would be putting themselves in vulnerable positions. Yes, you have every right to wear what you want, 
where you want, but you know full well that strutting around in a bikini with drunk men is asking for trouble, Ella said. So on one hand we have an extremist religious leader suggesting women deserve to be raped if wearing revealing clothing, and that religious leader is then universally condemned for his opinions right across Australia. And on the other hand, we have outrage at a nightclub promotion, including outrage from the manager of the Centre Against Sexual Assault, because it might lead to females being raped. Not deserving to be raped mind you, but concern that it might happen due to intoxication in the way they are dressed. I think feminists tend to merge these two views into one, which is nonsense as they are saying opposite things. Although they do have one opinion in common, that males won't be able to control themselves if they see a half-naked woman. This is not sexist towards women, it's sexist towards men. In other words, pomegranate bell, you are full of shit. Next. Society, were you alone when you were raped? In other words, men. It is okay to rape a woman if she is alone. In other words, women, you are only safe from men if you are in a group. Wow, I am guessing Pomegranate Bell is not all that intelligent. I think it's safe to say that most crimes are easier to commit when less people are around. You are more likely to be mugged at knife point if you walk down a dark alley by yourself than if you are standing in a crowded well-lit room. Most criminals try to avoid witnesses at least the smart ones. But to somehow twist this into, men, it is okay to rape a woman if she is alone, and, women, you are only safe from men if you are in a group. Wow. Someone's been drinking way too much feminist poison Kool-Aid. In other words, Pomegranate Bell is a fucking bigot. Next. Society, were you drunk when you were raped? In other words, men, it is okay to rape a woman if she is drunk. In other words, women, it is unsafe to be drunk. Ever. Okay, I have to say, were you drunk when you were raped? Is a relevant question. I am not suggesting that it's okay to rape anyone when they are drunk, but let's be totally honest here, the amount that someone has had to drink can affect their reliability as a witness. Imagine there was a car crash, and apart from the drivers involved, the only witness as to what happened is someone staggering home from the pub after six hours of drinking. Do you think their testimony would be reliable and without fault? Once again, let me be clear here, I am not saying it's okay to rape anyone when they are drunk, but it is a relevant question when it comes to their reliability as a witness. Of course it's typical of the feminist mind to twist this into, men, it is okay to rape a woman if she is drunk. I do not think this way. No one I know thinks this way. And the minuscule few who do think this way are condemned by society. To suggest that society accepts males raping drunk women is fucking delusional. In other words, Pomegranate Bell is crazier than a shoe shine in a shit storm. Next. Society, did you fight back when you were raped? In other words, men, if a woman is too scared to fight back, it is okay to rape her. In other words, women, Fear is not an excuse for not fighting back. In other words, women, only violence will show a man that you truly mean, no I do not want to have sex. Wow, so only violence will show a man that a woman does not want sex. Wow. In other words, Pomegranate Bell has a twisted fucked up mind. Society, bitch, cunt, pussy, whore, and slut, are all socially acceptable insults. In other words, it is an insult to be feminine, and or have feminine genitalia. In other words, it is not okay for women to be promiscuous. And here we have the perfect example of the feminist one-sided argument. Of course she does not consider the words like, dick, cockhead, wanker, tool, smeghead, or prick, just to name a few, are socially acceptable insults towards men. But why would she only consider half the picture when she undoubtedly knows that males are called similar insults. Most likely she has started with her conclusion that women are oppressed, and then proceeds to only acknowledge that information that supports her predetermined conclusion. Or possibly she only has a problem with insults towards women, thus holding them separate and above males, seeing them as more valued and in more need of protection. It's not the first time I have come across this argument, and every time I am amazed that someone could make such a clearly weak, 
easy to prove wrong argument. In other words, pomegranate bell is either too lazy or too stupid, most likely a combination of both, to make a legitimate argument. Next. Society, when a girl gets raped and there is a picture taken, it is perfectly natural to call her a slut. In other words, it is a girl's fault if she gets raped. In other words, boys, you will gain notoriety if you rape a girl. In other words, ridiculing a victim of sexual assault is a societal norm and you are stupid if you do not join in. Great, we are back on the topic of rape. I cannot help but think that all these rape-related comments made by Pomegranate Bell so far are just the result of living in the feminist echo chamber where they hear nothing but the sound of their own voices telling each other how cruel the world is to each and every one of them. When in reality, they are the most privileged and protected group in the history of the human race. Boys do not gain notoriety for rape. In fact it only takes a false allegation to destroy a boy's life. In other words, Pomegranate Bell does not live in the real world. Next. Society, if a girl is raped, she must have provoked it somehow. In other words, men cannot be held accountable for their own actions. In other words, men are like wild animals that cannot stop themselves. Yeah I think I covered this one earlier with Sheik Halali. These are not the opinions of the vast majority of the human race, especially in the Western world. Although a lot of feminist rape hysteria fits in with the, men are like wild animals that cannot stop themselves, comment. I also find the, men cannot be held accountable for their own actions, comment interesting, considering the amount of time feminists spend making excuses for the bad behavior of females. If we take into account a sentencing gap, then it's easy to conclude that males are held more accountable for their actions than females. In other words, it must be hard for Pomegranate Bell to breathe, with her head so far up her own arse. Next. Society, these ass, you look sexy, etc. are all acceptable compliments to a woman. In other words, there is no such thing as sexual harassment. In other words, women should be gratified that men want to have sex with them. In other words, a man being interested in a woman automatically means she is obliged to be interested back. Of course there is such a thing as sexual harassment, but it does not just apply to females. And I have to laugh at. A man being interested in a woman automatically means she is obliged to be interested back, because in my experience, if you clearly state to a woman, sorry not interested, she will then see it as a challenge. A perfect example of this happened late last year to myself and a mate. We both had a weekday afternoon off, and it had been a while since we had caught up, so we decided to meet in a city pub for a couple of beers. My mate got the first round, and commented to me when he got back to our table, that there was a drunk blonde at the bar. This was 1 o'clock on a Thursday afternoon, so it was unusual for someone to be clearly that drunk so early. About five minutes later she staggered over to our table and asked, Do you mind if I join you guys? It was very, very, clear to me that this woman was nothing but trouble, so I looked her straight in the face and said, Actually, yes I do. I was not rude, just blunt, but the look on both her face, and my mate's face was hilarious. Clearly this young blonde bimbo had never been told no before and my mate looked equally shocked that I was actually telling a woman no. It's one of those moments that I really wish I had a picture of. I politely explained that my mate and myself were having a long overdue catch up. And she staggered off with a stunned look on her face. But the story does not end there. Because when it was time for my shout, and I went to the bar to get some drinks, she moved over to our table to work on my friend to let her join us. When I returned to the table with the drinks, I had my friend saying to me, Come on man, can't the lady join us for a while? I gave in, as I knew I wouldn't hear the end of it otherwise, and I thought it might be an interesting lesson for my friend. And she proceeded to dominate the conversation with drunken talk about herself and her problems, as I knew she would, all of which was directed towards me, as if my friend wasn't even sitting at the table. I had committed the cardinal sin of saying no to her so now she was determined to change my mind and have me accept her. My friend on the other hand, had accepted her from the start, so there was no reason for her to give him any attention. 
At one point when she got up to stagger to the toilet, my mate leaned over to me and said, Don't say a fucking word, I admit you were right, I shouldn't have invited her to sit down. That's about as close I came to getting an apology. I like to think he would have more sense if the situation happened again, but sadly he probably would not. The drunken blonde also criticized any other females that entered the bar. Two of which I actually had an adult, interesting conversation with once I escaped my table, leaving my mate to deal with the drunken blonde by himself, which was not long as she soon went off to find other targets. But the fact that I had actually dared to say no to her, in a sense, rejected her, now gave her reason to focus on me. It was pretty clear she was not interested in me, just my attention and acceptance. She never asked questions about me, showed no interest in who I am, she only spoke about herself. She was only looking for attention and validation. I am not suggesting that all women are like this, the two women I spoke to later on were not. One was originally from New York while the other was from Western Australia and trained horses for a living. I actually had an interesting conversation with them, because it was not about attention-seeking or ego. But there are women out there who need to receive attention, and will flick their long red hair in a stranger's face, in a pub to get their attention. That last reference is to a close friend's sister, hopefully it won't get me into much trouble. And for the record, I never bought the drunk blonde a single drink, I am not that stupid but my mate was. In other words, pomegranate Bell is incapable of realizing that there is shitty behavior from both genders, when it comes to the mating game, and just about everything else we do. Next. Society, beautiful, pretty, sexy, fuckable etc. are the best compliments a woman can get. In other words, women have no value except in their physical appearance. In other words, women should not be measured by their intelligence or actual skills. In other words, women exist to be physically desirable to men. It is true that society puts value on the physical appearance of females, something many attractive females use to their advantage I might add. It is also true that society puts value on males based on their ability to provide, not for themselves, but for others. Who is going to get more female attention? A doctor or a guy who drives a garbage truck? Using pomegranate Bell's own logic, this would suggest that, men exist to be physically providers for women and children. Sounds like a good reason to go MRA or MIG toe to me. Let me point out though, that in my story about the drunken blonde, I preferred to have a conversation with two less physically attractive, I am not saying physically unattractive, just less physically attractive females, due to their personalities, rather than endure the vacuous ramblings of a self-obsessed cunt. It's beyond me how some guys can put up with bad behavior from attractive women. Personally I think in many cases it's about the male seeking validation of his own attractiveness. In other words, yes, some men see nothing beyond a woman's beauty, just as some women see all men as misogynistic rapists. In other words, pomegranate bell stereotypes bad behavior from some members of one gender, as being indicative of all members of that gender, while simultaneously ignoring her own bigotry and bias. Next. Society, it is natural for men to wolf whistle and call compliments after a woman, slap her ass, etc. In other words, women, all men are pigs and there is nothing you can do about it. In other words, women, you must grin and bear sexual harassment. In other words, men, to be a true man you must sexually harass women. Okay, as I have said in previous videos, I agree cat calls are wrong, no one should be yelling out comments about a stranger's arse or tits or whatever. But it's hardly epidemic. It is something done by a minority, at very least in the part of the world I am from. To suggest that this is something that all men do, or it's natural for men to do it is ludicrous. And I do not know anyone, and I do mean anyone, who thinks that someone is not a true man unless they sexually harass women. In other words, Pomegranate Bell is only interested in constructing negative stereotypes of masculinity, and applying those stereotypes to every male. Next. Society, there is nothing wrong with the wage gap. In other words, women are inherently worth less than men. In other words, it is wrong for a woman to want equal pay. In other words, 
women are not as suitable for work as men are. In other words, men, women are worth less than you and it is okay to ridicule them because they do not matter. No, society does not say women are worth less than men, it is women who through their own choices earn less than men. Women have equal pay to men, it's been law across the Western world for around 40 years. But women on average work less hours, and on average choose safer lower paying work. I really am sick of dealing with the wage gap myth. In other words, Pomegranate Bell would probably believe the earth is flat, if it could somehow be blamed on males, and turn women into victims. Next. Society, it is not okay to protest sexism. In other words, sexism does not exist. In other words, equality does not apply to women. In other words, feminists must be kept in line by a backlash of hate. In other words, feminists are automatically man-haters. In other words, feminists are threatening to men. In other words, men, it is not okay to support equal rights for women. Oh boy, where to start? Okay, first off, our society is obsessed with sexism, but only if males are doing it to females, to think otherwise is delusional. Then we have the statement, equality does not apply to women. Which is ironic, as feminism is not interested in the equality of the genders, but just equality for females, which is not true equality. This is easy to prove. It's called the sentencing gap. Females are less likely to be found guilty, or receive less of a sentence, than males who have committed the exact same crime. This is not equality. Yet I have never, ever, heard a single feminist ever say a single word about it, I have however heard some feminists say women should receive even less or no sentence, as it seems whenever a woman commits a crime it's somehow always the fault of a male. So please, someone, anyone, please explain to me why this piece of inequality that affects males is never ever brought up by feminists? There are injustices and inequalities for both genders. A movement obsessed with fixing only the inequalities of one gender is not an equality movement. We live in a society that is obsessed with equality for females, but does not give two shits about the equality of males. Then she says, feminists must be kept in line by a backlash of hate, which translates as, someone asking questions, or pointing out that the wage gap myth, for example, is false, and then showing supporting evidence. And she goes on, feminists are automatically man-haters. Well, I have no doubt in my mind that feminists like, pomegranate bell, are indeed in every way, man-haters. I think the biased bigoted bullshit she spews forth is clear evidence of that. And she finishes with, men, it is not okay to support equal rights for women. Well, I do support equal rights, equal opportunity to succeed or fail, and equal responsibility for all males and females, of all races. I just do not think feminism is the way to do it, in fact I think feminism does the opposite. In other words, a diet of feminist propaganda obviously leaves pomegranate bell starved of facts. And finally, feminism, this is not an okay society to live in. Actually, I would suggest that modern western society is the luckiest and most fortuitous society that has ever existed. That's not to say that there are not problems that need fixing, I would not be making these videos if there wasn't. We can continue to improve and make things better, but feminism is not the way to do it. Creating nothing but negative male stereotypes is not the way to do it. Creating false statistics and propaganda is not the way to do it. In other words, it's individuals like Pomegranate Bell, who do far more harm than good.